Um, we all know that, um, let's see if I can move your slides. Okay, so we all know that MIC is an oncoprotein transcription factor. Um, three members, they all share the same architecture, N-terminal transcriptional activation domain and uh, C-terminal DNA binding domain. Now, MIC itself cannot bind DNA. Um, it has to interact with MAX, forming a heterodimer. Then the complex can bind DNA, initiating transcription. And MIC is dysregulated in over half of all human cancers, likely because it can regulate um, thousands of genes and a diverse set of cellular processes. MIC is dysregulated by aberrant signaling, such as RAS, and also by gene amplification. And one example is MIC-N. It's highly amplified up to 300-fold in a type of tumor called a neuroblastoma. MIC amplification leads to poor survival rate. And the genetic amplification results in high protein expression level in contrast to non-amplified uh, cells. So in general, MIC dysregulation often results in enhanced expression. Now the question is how does enhanced expression promote tumor genesis? One hypothesis is that the enhanced expression allows binding to low, bind, low affinity binding sites of the genome. And this leads to expression of additional genes promoting uh, tumor genesis. This is so-called make invasion uh, hypothesis. And we ask, is there a fundamentally different activation mechanism? It's a big question. And uh, we were lucky uh, to have an interesting discovery that allows us to ask four small questions. Uh, many years ago, we found that um, in the make an amplified uh, cancer cell, the MIC protein forms punctate structures, which are absent in the non-amplified cells. So this leads us to ask the first question, what are these punctate structures and how do they form? Here we tag MIC by GFP and we express them in the type of neuroblastoma cells called SHEP that has no endogenous MIC. And we found that above a threshold concentration, MIC forms um, jaw plates, but below that threshold, MIC is evenly distributed in the nucleus. And here, that means the punctate formation is concentration dependent. And this is the typical feature of phase separation. Now, before I tell you what is phase separation. Let's take a look at two contrasting views from a biologist versus a physicist uh, when they look at the cell. Uh, in the eyes of a biologist, the cell contains beautiful structures from um, membrane-bound organelles to membrane-less organelles and uh, protein machineries, complexes with various sizes. Now, a physicist will say, now that's um, too complicated. In order to understand phase separation, in my eyes, the cell contains nothing but two types of molecules, the solute and the solvent. And there is no size, just dot. So a uh, biologist will say, wait a minute, that's way too crazy, right? the cell is no longer a cell. But here, uh, I will show you how this highly simplified view can really help us to capture the key concepts of phase separation. And I will skip the uh, how we get the free energy uh, equation. Instead, we will be focusing on understanding this equation. Here, uh, phi is a uh, fraction of solute, and uh, that is proportional to the solute concentration. 
and the chi in this formula is a, 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 a dimensionless unit determined by delta epsilon, that is energy change when a pair of solid solute forms and uh, which is in the sacrifice of two pairs of solute and solvent and with a gain of a pair of solvent solvent. So here, um, chi is uh, determined by the effective solute solute interaction and a high or strong effective uh, solute solute interaction means high chi. So let's remember high interaction, high chi, okay. So now let's take a look at the free energy curve as a function of concentration. When chi is below the critical value, the slope, which is the um, chemical potential, and we can imagine chemical potential as like a gravitational potential. The object moves from high to low potential value. And here, when the concentration increases, the slope increases. Now let's assume at one time point, there is a condensate. So now the protein will move from the condensate to the dilute phase um, because that's where the low chemical potential is. And this means the condensate cannot form and therefore no phase separation. On the other hand, when chi is above a critical value, now the free energy curve will look like this. So when the concentration increases, chemical potential decreases. So that means the protein can move spontaneously from the dilute phase to the condensate. In other words, phase separation will happen. And we can also take a look at the uh, phase diagram here. When the uh, chi is below the critical value, no phase separation, no matter how high the protein concentration is. But above the uh, critical value, now phase separation can happen if the protein concentration is, reaches the uh, saturation concentration or C set. And uh, that's uh, why the concentration dependent condensate formation is a typical uh, feature of phase separation. So we got the answer to the first question that these punctic structures, they are condensate and they form via phase separation. And this leads us to ask the second question. Are these mixed condensates biologically active? Do they have transcriptional activity, right? Now we find that these mixed condensates, they contain max. That is, as we have learned, necessary for DNA binding. And they contain the genomic P53 DNA. That is a target of MIC. And they contain transcription machinery, including the mediator and the PO2, and they contain nascent RNA. So we got answer to the second question. This mic condensate are transcriptional active. Then we ask the third question: what's the role of phase separation in regulating the transcriptome? Now, in the field, people use mutagenesis-based approach to answer this question, but this is often problematic because the mutations can potentially affect dilute phase transcriptional activity, for example, by blocking interaction with the mediator. And uh, that's uh, the problem in the, uh, in the field. And there are many um, published papers. Uh, they have these uh, problematic conclusions because of this uh, problem. And we approach this by developing a new chemogenetic tool. So here, we don't want to introduce mutations and we don't want to increase protein abundance um, that will affect the transcription activity. So this leaves us basically just one option. That is to increase chi, as we have learned, to, in order to induce phase separation. So how do we do this? Well, we can increase solute solute interaction that can uh, increase chi. And here we develop, we designed a small molecule inducible multivalent tag that increases solute solute interaction without affecting MIC interaction. And indeed, this tool allows us to induce MIC phase separation without 
changing the protein abundance. And uh, basically here, um, this tool allows us to change the uh, saturation concentration. Basically, it reduces uh, saturation concentration. So now, uh, milk can go from non-phase -se separate state to the phase separate state. Uh, and by comparing the phase separate versus non-phase separate samples, we discover that phase separation regulates about 100 genes among the over 6,000 genes that are regular by MIC. So uh, we got answer for the third question that MIC phase separation selectively regulates the transcriptome. Then we ask the uh, uh, fourth question, is this uh, differential law a general uh, uh, phenomenon in regulating the uh, transcriptome? And uh, here we investigated a uh, YAP uh, fusion oncoprotein from a cancer patient. It forms a uh, uh, condensate by phase separation. And uh, here we approach this problem by developing another chemogenetic tool uh, uh, that can dissolve condensate. So here, again, we don't want to introduce mutations and we don't want to decrease protein abundance uh, in order to uh, 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 dissolve the condensate. So this leaves us basically one option that is to decrease chi as we have learned uh, uh, a moment ago. And uh, how do we do this? Well, we can actually increase solute solvent interaction. That would uh, uh, decrease chi because it decreases the effective solute solute interaction, right? So here we designed a small molecule, an inducible tag that uh, recruits a highly soluble fluorescent protein called m cherry, and this increases solute solvent interaction without affecting uh, MIC uh, interaction. And indeed, this tool dissolves uh, MIC condensate without affecting the uh, expression uh, level. And here, what happens is um, this tool increases saturation uh, concentration. So now we can go from a uh, phase separate state to the non phase separate state. And uh, by comparing the uh, phase separated versus non phase separated samples, we found that phase separation of this YAP fusion oncoprotein regulates about 90 genes among. Um, over 2,000 genes that are regulated by this fusion oncoprotein. So now we got answer for the fourth question that this uh, um, uh, differential regulation of phase separation uh, by phase separation uh, on the tr transcriptome seems to be a general feature. So we here um, want to ask the fifth question, what, are they, what is the common motif of these phase separate genes? And uh, we are still doing this, so um, we will uh, tell this story later in the future. Now, one big question for the biomolecular condensate field is that is this differential regulation by phase separation is a general property for other biomolecular condensates, other than transcriptional condensates, such as for kinase condensate or uh, uh, other enzyme uh, that form condensate. Um, so I will stop here. And this work was uh, done by two very talented postdocs, um, Jinjiao and Cai, and with help from many other uh, lab members. And also, uh, this work wouldn't be possible without our uh, wonderful collaborators, including Bill Weiss and uh, um, uh, Mitek and Yin here. Also, uh, we learned a lot. Uh, and uh, uh, Eric Holland on YAP fusion oncoprotein.
and uh, um, we still have some time, so I will just very briefly uh, introduce our uh, three big programs in our lab. Um, first, we uh, love designing those uh, imaging tools um, by new physical principles. So we have uh, developed these chemogenetic tools as we have just learned. And also we have developed uh, kinase and protease activity reporters. You can um, take a look at our published papers. Um, uh, this These reporters, they can form highly fluorescent droplet upon activation of this enzyme uh, for GFP. So it's genetic encoded and uh, it works in uh, 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 transgenic animals, including Drosophila and the zebrafish. And we also have developed protein-protein instruction reporters that's totally reversible and fluorogenic from non-fluorescent to fluorescent. Um, and also several other types of protein-protein instruction reporters. And uh, um, we have also developed this near infrared fluorescent proteins for uh, protein labeling. And the second program uh, we are doing is to discover a new biological principles that's enabled or illuminated by uh, these new biological tools. And uh, for example, we have just mentioned about this differential flow of phase separation by transcription factors and uh, also other uh, 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 very uh, interesting biological rules. And the third program we are developing is to identify new therapeutics uh, because we have these highly sensitive fluorescent reporters. So that allow us to discover uh, inhibitors of like uh, uh, viral proteins and uh, also uh, kinases involved in uh, um, tumor, uh, tumor development. And uh, we also have developed uh, several inhibitors against the so-called undruggable targets uh, that will soon uh, be uh, released. Okay, so that will be all. Thank you.